Good evening everyone. Welcome to the final in a series of three videos where I add protection circuitry to the first generation Space 65 keyboard. The first video I removed all of the existing LEDs, four out of six of which were burned out and replaced them, and then I added an ESD protection chip. In the second video I added bypass capacitors across the plus 5 volt and ground leg of each individual RGB LED. Now in this final video I'll add the last protection that I haven't done yet which is recommended by most experts and that is a resistor in series with the data inline of the LEDs. So the very first LED in the sequence which is the one at the very top on the front of the keyboard this is where the data inline connects to the um, Atmega 32U4 I think it's the E2 pin now, after that, the data out from that first LED feeds the data in of the next LED. So we only need to protect the, the uh, connection between that first LED and the Atmega. This is to prevent the Atmega 32U4 from potentially sending too much current to the first LED and burning it out. As usual, first thing I need to do is unscrew these screws. I can just loosen them and they'll stay kept in place by these handy little rubber feet, which is kind of a controversial feature of the first generation Space 65. Some people don't like the placement of these pads covering the screw holes. I personally do like that. back. Now I think it'll be a simple task adding this protection hopefully. Now I've read that most sources recommend such as Adafruit for example they're recommending somewhere between a 300 to 500 ohm resistor so to be on the safe side I'll go ahead and use the 500 ohm if that's supposed to work which is what I've read so here we are again once again looking at the back side of the PCB on the other side from where the LEDs are so you can see here earlier we added these bypass capacitors between ground over on this side and plus 5 volts on this side. So then you see this uh, plus 5 volts coming from directly from the USB connector and I think uh, it's kind of hard to see here but there was ground also coming from there and then this right here should be the data in that feeds the LEDs. Now, what I saw on the data sheet is that E2 was the pin that's being used. What I saw in the QMK code, I mean, was that it's using E2 to control the LEDs. So let me just take a quick look at the, the uh, pinout of the Atmega 32U4. I believe E2 is up in the top right corner somewhere, so let me just check. Yeah, so E2 is on the right side, and it's the topmost pin. So what I'm going to do here is just confirm whether that's really the data line that I'm looking for. go back to looking at this here so if indeed this trace goes to this via that pokes through to the other side of the PCB and then leads to the LED on the other side then I should be able to 
detect continuity between this point here and the E2 pin on the microcontroller. I'm going to double check that first. So I'll expose the trace first. Yeah. With one of my, let's see, my multimeter leads. Let me zoom out just a hair so you can see what I'm doing. So I'll first set my multimeter to ohms because I'm just testing for continuity here. I want to get a non-zero value, something something low, close to zero. So see, that's practically zero when I touch the leads together. So I'll touch one of the leads here to this trace. And the other lead, I'll carefully touch to E2. Yep. So that leads to E2. So I got uh, close to zero resistance. So next step, I'll break into my SMD resistors. So I have a, an assortment here of SMD resistors that I got off of Amazon. And these SMD components, uh, the resistors have a code on them that tells you what resistance they are. It's a three digit number. So I'm looking for 500 ohms. When I Google the resistor codes, 500 ohms is a code 501. So what I want is a resistor that says 501 on it. Now having said that, as I look through these, it looks like they've actually, they've actually labeled them by the resistance, not not using the, the three digit code, so. So, if I opened these up and looked at the little resistor closely, I could probably see the code on it. But it might actually be even easier than that because It might actually say the resistance. It looks like it does. That one's apparently not labeled. So fifty, three hundred forty k. So it's an interesting assortment. It's a bunch of different uh, values. One of these was supposed to be, I think, five hundred ohms. I think there's supposed to be a 500 ohm resistor included in here, a few of them. I hope so. If not, we can use another value. The recommendation I got from Adafruit is to use a resistance somewhere between 350 and 500. So if I'm not able to find one closer to 500, I can go with something lower, closer to 350, and it still should protect well enough. So here's three, 330, that's close. I may, I may come back to that one. There's 100, I don't know why they put R, I think, I think they mean ohms, but uh, I'm not used to seeing. So there's, a, there's 510, that's interesting. So that might actually work. Let's take a look here. Let's see what the three digit code on these is. Are these really 510 ohm resistors? Which is what they appear to be. Oh, 
Oops, I was trying to open it from the wrong side. So this side is clear. Let's see if I can make out what numbers are on there. Five one one. Yeah, I think that's. I'm pretty sure that is five ten ohms. So we'll go ahead and take one of those out. I think that'll probably work. It's actually higher than it needs to be by ten ohms. I doubt that that's enough difference to cause any problem. I think it'll still work. Let me get an idea of how tiny this thing is in relation to the trace and everything else. Okay, there it is. So what I need to do here, first of all, I can put a little bit of solder there on that exposed part of the trace that I scratched to expose the uh, copper. I can Put a little solder on there first. Try to get some solder to stick to that. So it looks like I tinned that trace just a bit. Now, in order for this to work, unlike the capacitors and the diet the TVS diodes and the capacitors that we installed, which can just go um, in be connected in parallel to the plus five volt on the ground. In this case, we have to actually connect this in series. So we have to actually break this existing connection that this trace makes. So that, because we need the current to go through this resistor all the time, always. So we have to actually cut this trace first and then add the resistor so that the, so that the trace is cut and then the resistor bridges the gap that we create. So first we have to create the gap and then bridge it with the resistor. So that's different than what we did before where previously we were we didn't have to cut any existing connections. So let's see, can I zoom in any further? I'm not sure if, if my razor blade cut through it all the way. Let's just double check here. Let's try this again. So I'm cutting downwards into the PCB to cut the trace. It looks like I broke the trace, which is what I was trying to do. I think I think I broke through it. It looks like it is. Let's double check. Maybe not. dab of alcohol here. Make it so I can see what I'm doing. Looks to me like there's a tiny break in the trace. Okay. Close to the to the through hole here. So now 
try to cut here on the other side. see yeah it looks like the connection is broken now for that trace now the mask the uh, silk screen stuff of the PCB is uh, covering the rest of this trace so I'll carefully scrape that off so that I can add a bit of solder to the other side of the trace after the break part that's after the break. Okay. So we got uh, the exposed trace on both sides of the break. Now let me tin that exposed end of the trace a bit so that I can stick the resistor to it. So I think that's probably pretty much ready to receive the SMD resistor, most likely. Just double check here, make sure I really got some solder to stick. Okay. Let me clean that up a touch so I can see what I'm doing. Now I'll bring the resistor. Now just to double check that this has had the intended effect, I'll go ahead and plug in the keyboard and confirm that I don't see any light coming from the LED. Yeah, LED LED's not doing anything because it's not getting the data in the signal. So that means I, I have in fact broken the connection. That's one way I can tell. Because it was, uh, the RGB was turned on before and now nothing's happening. So now, bring this little SMD component. It's very tiny as you can see, so it's, it's a little bit fiddly. Now the goal is to Tack one side on to that trace, and the other side to the other trace, the other side of the break. So for this resistor to bridge this gap, that's what we're trying to accomplish here. Just need to carefully position it. Okay, that's a bit tricky. I think I will, oops. So, with some extra solder on that one side of the resistor, it'll be a bit easier to try to tack it down to this side. doing okay so it's not quite flat let me readjust resistor okay now it's pretty much flat and I can see the little shiny end poking out of the trace on the other side. So if I solder to the other side, I should 
have a good connection. I think. It's a little hard to see whether I actually got it or not. So let me. Let me try cleaning it a little bit and see if I can tell. This kind of rework can be a little bit difficult, especially if you're not using like a jeweler's loop, like I'm not right now. I'm just using, but I'm, but I'm using my zoom through OBS, so that helps. I'm not 100% sure if I got a good connection to that trace. Let me just give it another retouch. I think I got it, but I'm not 100% sure. Let's see This is isopropyl alcohol, by the way, and a microfiber rag. That looks promising. About as zoomed in as I can get. I think I have a good connection there. And this is how I can tell. I will plug it in, see if the LEDs light up. They did. So there you have it. The resistor is added in series. I used a 510 ohm resistor in series with the data inline, the RGB. And that one went so hard and will give me a little extra peace of mind. So now, now this keyboard has, here you can see the ESD protection chip that I added. You can see the bypass capacitors here and here and over here. Well, you can't see them at the moment, but if I turn it this way, you can. <laughs> see, here's these. There's the bypass capacitors for these LEDs. And last but not least, now we got the inline resistor on the data line. So this PCB has all the standard protections now that you would expect um, for really good protection from things like ESD and voltage spikes. So. Go ahead and button it up. I always forget which way this little guy goes. This diffuser, I guess it goes that way. What a lovely little keyboard. And I'm happy now to know that it will be protected from damage to the LEDs or to the other parts of the circuitry for years to come. Should be amply protected after these additions that I've made to the circuitry. Now, I think it's worth mentioning, in case anyone watches this video who didn't already hear, that the designer of this keyboard PCB, uh, I believe it's Demo, is his nickname he goes by online, has designed a new version of PCB which will be compatible with 
this keyboard and that PCB will be part of the group by for the version 2 of Space 65. The, uh, I think it's called the Space 65 Cyber Voyager. So that new PCB will also fit in this keyboard and it has ESD protection and it has bypass capacitors. I don't know if they took care of putting the protection in that I put tonight in my keyboard circuitry, which is the series resistor on the data inline. I will probably reach out to them and uh, to, to demo. He probably already knows, um, but if he hasn't, uh, it's worth mentioning to him. So I'll probably reach out to him and, and just mention it and see if he'll add it if he hasn't already. Because that's pretty standard when working with these WS2812 RGB LEDs. It's, it's kind of about the best practice that is pretty well known. So looks like we're good to go. Thanks for watching and good luck if you do this mod on your own. Hopefully it'll protect your keyboard.